Hey there, what's up internet? My name is Black Light Attack. I'm once, twice, three times a lady, and this is episode 33 of Let's Play Final Fantasy VII. So last time we made it out of the Forgotten Capital, um, we made it to the Icicle Inn, which is a nice little town in the north where everybody's freezing their dicks off. Did I go into this room yet? I don't think... Uh, yeah, I did actually, we just don't need to be there yet. And we um, came across some tapes made by Professor Gast. Uh, it's dangerous. Please don't go. I'm still going. I'm after several. Damn, I was just being nice. What the? Who are those people over there? It looks like trouble. Uh, some videos left by Professor Gas explaining the origins of Genova. Hey, it's Elena with a goofy-ass camera angle. Uh, as well as we found out uh, Eris's origins. Professor Gas was her father. And uh, there they are. Hurry. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, it wasn't an awkward transition or anything. And Elena is one of the Turks, of course. Cloud, <sighs> I won't let you go any further. Uh, fucking do something about Elena. What's down there? It's a secret. But it doesn't really matter. But you really got guts doing in my bo or doing my boss like that. I didn't do your boss. I would do him if he let me. I mean, boss sung? That wasn't us. Sephiroth did it. Fucking wasn't me. No, don't think you can fool me, liar. Let's not forget that, uh, Elena is in Louvre with Cloud. I'm not lying, it was Sephiroth. Don't try to act innocent, I'll never forget it. Okay, it's too bad. Oh, man. Uh, so, you know, it looks like talking alone won't cut it. You're gonna have to feel some pain. Just you and me. Oh, we're gonna fight? No, I can handle him. There's no way he can avoid my punch. Of course not. What? Yeah. Dodge that punch. Yeah, I, I, I dodged it. <laughs> and then she rolls away. Apparently, she put so much force into that punch when she missed, she tucked and rolled. Well, they sure were weak for Shinra's. She she ended up going down the slope. I, I think it was just kind of poorly visually represented due to the uh, graphical limitations of the time. I think it was supposed to kind of be like she's at the top of a snow hill and her punch kind of threw her off balance and she rolled down and then... Soldiers chase out of her. It's just kind of a humorous exchange. But anyway, after that part, you're going to talk to this kid. And he said he got hurt on his snowboard. So he'll give it to us. Thank you, child. Got the oh, key item snowboard. Hell yeah. So uh, we can't really go down this. This is apparently, if you, if you talk to this guy a few times, he says it's dangerous. It's a big snow mound. You can't go down without a snowboard. Well, god damn it. So we got us a snowboard. So, sorry I, took, sorry, I took off a while ago. Look, there was going to be trouble. Yeah, obviously there was. Anyhow, you'll need yeah, you'll need to snowboard to get down that hill. Want me to teach you how to ride one? No, fuck you. All right, Big Ed, don't blame me if you get hurt. Actually, you know what? Remind me. Remind me. Uh, up to kick off when stop. Move left, move right. Square's the break. X is the jump. Directional button down is also a break. And then we can edge. <laughs> it's all about the edging. So, yeah, if you haven't gathered, this is going to be another mini game. This is actually a really fun one too. I'm so bad at the though. I'm so bad at it at uh, at the snowboarding. So let's fucking do it, man. This is such an awesome part too. It's like some cool border shit. Oh man, it's awesome. The only thing is, it's kind of awkward because there's no music. <laughs> there's, I think there's music later. Uh, actually, when we go back to the um, to the gold saucer, uh, you may remember. Some of you with really good memories will remember that there was a uh, snowboarding mini game in Wonder Square that was closed, and. Uh, it's kind of funny because there there are three mini games that are reliving mini games that occur during events in the story, and uh, the first one obviously is the motorbike one that we did, where where you gotta slash the uh, the evil bike riders with your sword, and then there's the I keep crashing the walls I'm so bad I don't think the balloons actually do anything, um, they uh, and then there was the snowboard and there was a submarine mini game that was I think one of them was broken and then the other one some kid was using. And the way that the reason for that is, is because they're locked until you actually do the uh, the mini game for the first time during the story. So if we were to to somehow get back to the gold saucer, uh, there's a point in the game where the gold saucer closes down for a while due to events in the game. I won't ruin what they are, but just trust me on that. Uh, and uh, if you go back. I don't know if there's a way to get back to the gold saucer before that happens, but if there is, then you would find that the snowboarding minigame is now available. Um, but the uh, the submarine minigame still is not, so we're, we're at least going to have a submarine minigame coming up at some point. It's actually not for a little while. Uh, so, 
I'm actually I'm actually so bad at this. I'm so bad at this mini game. I don't think there's like a like a hold it down and then jump kind of thing. Or I honestly don't know what the secret. Maybe I maybe I had to be have been going faster. I need to have not like keep crashing into things. Um, there's also I have to say this part coming up is my fucking least favorite part of the entire game. I fucking hate this part of the game. There are very few games of this part that I just openly dislike, and this is one of them. It's a part coming up called Great Glacier, and you'll see why in a bit, but it's basically just a giant fuck-ass snow level, and it's so easy to get lost, and I fucking hate it, and there's a really rare materia that you can only get there. It's a, Our next summon materia is found there, and it's really fucking complicated how you get it. You have to take a really specific path. It's one of those things, like, if you come from one direction into one screen, and then... Like, say, say I come into a certain screen from the west, and then I head north, and it leads to, obviously, the, the next screen, right? If you come in from the east and then head north, it'll give you a different screen that you go to. So, it's inconsistent, because it's supposed to simulate being lost, because it's all, like, a big snowy wasteland. And it just fucking sucks. I just hate it. God damn it, rocks. You're killing me. I don't really know what, like, the best way to go is here. You know, you have a couple forks in the road. I, I honestly have no idea which is, like, the easiest or whatever. But I do know that the challenges are different depending on which route you take. Here we have a bunch of ice skating moogles, which are apparently a real thing. It's not just, oh shit! I destroyed somebody's igloo. I just made I just made an Eskimo homeless. Oh god! We don't even like having it. Well, we did we did get the Aurora armlet, which will make us uh, immune to ice type attacks. Ice type. I'm talking like it's Pokemon. Any any uh, cold attacks. Um, which will come in. Uh, you see, you see me just not giving a shit and just sucking at this mini game. I'm so fucking bad at this mini game. It's absurd. Um, yeah, I, oh, you know what I forgot to mention? Since uh, the boss battle took place during the part where I wasn't commentating, that boss battle uh, after Aeris dies. Right before that, we got an item called Water Ring. Interestingly, that that fight is called Genova Life. The uh, the first Genova fight was called Genova Birth. That fight is called Genova Life. Um, that fight you can actually. Uh, not die if you just equip the watering to one of your characters. Every single one of Genova Life's attacks are water-based. Um, which kind of tied into the whole name of that episode. So we jump pretty far, and then we can look at the map with Square. The map isn't super helpful, though, um, in uh, figuring out where you are. You kind of it's The map is not exact. It, it's only an approximate. But anyway, so because every single one of her attacks are uh, water based if you uh, if you equip the watering it one character can never be hurt by Genova life so it's actually not difficult at all the aqualung can hurt really bad but I mean when you have one character getting killed by every single one of her attacks you're just you're just not gonna lose god damn it I can't even escape this one who said there's a limit break Sid what limit break you got limit oh Sid, Sid ain't got no fucking material ah oh, I forgot I took the material off whoopsie daisy um, so, said before, uh, the voting is still open for, uh, for which, which, uh, character we want to end on, you know, I'll take all your, all your, uh, your decision, all your votes into consideration. Maybe I'll open up a straw poll for this, maybe, maybe we'll, uh, calculate it. Stop casting mini on Sid, you fucking wankers. I heard you. And now Cloud's not gonna be able to do anything. If one of these guys eats Sid, I'm gonna be so mad. Yeah, he just ate Sid, you fucking piece of shit. Oh no, I'm sorry, he just ate Kate Sith, because Kate Sith apparently got the mini too. And now yeah, Cloud's not gonna be affected by mini because you have a ribbon on. Ugh. So that's a strategy for Genova Life. You do, you literally can't ruse uh can't can't ruse. You'll never ruse a fight. You can't lose the fight if you equip a uh fucking water ring. Pretty great. Uh, Bolt Plume, because fuck you, because I won't deal any damage with physical attacks if I'm mini. If you, if you have mini status on, it makes you only deal one damage per attack. It's pretty fucking annoying. Um, just like this part. I hate this part. I really hate this part. So, let's see. We actually need to equip everybody's materia, and I think I goofed up my, um... Oh, no, they do have their... They do have their armors. Okay, perfect. I sh oh, I forgot to buy Kate Sith's weapon at the town, so he he's only gonna have four uh, material slots. That's shitty. That's all he had last time, to be fair. But um, basically, gonna want to give him the basically gonna want to give him some physical stuff. Give him death blow, steal. Gotta always gotta have an enemy skill and then manipulate. Why not? 
Sid can have these. Oh, uh, actually, give those back. We're gonna get some more physical stuff going on Cloud. No, he doesn't need another enemy skin material. Sydney, you know what? I'm gonna take. Mm, now nah, I'll put that on Sid. And second guessing myself a whole bunch here. And then Sid's just gonna be our caster. Why not? Why not? Uh, I guess we can go long range and long range and luck plus. Why not? And then with Sid, we're just gonna equip a bunch of summons to him. Do, 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 do. Probably a range. We're gonna make Sid our caster. It's, he's not really totally fit for being a caster, like based on his um his base stats. But you know what? Fuck it. I don't really care. Uh, I did show you guys Kajata during the the uh, boss fight during the Genova fight. He's got like no HP now. Do, do, put him back there, and we should be good. Um, Kajata's a pretty interesting, interesting summon. Um, uh, looks like trouble. Oh yeah, so this is actually this will actually get you out of Gra uh, Great Glacier, I believe. Oh Jesus! It's like a whole like network of caves. That <laughs> Cloud's like trapped in the ice, rolling like Elena was. Oh god, it's like a Sonic the Hedgehog level. Jesus. And then this will actually uh, deposit us outside of Great Glacier. So I guess this is a way to get back. If you want to backtrack all the way back through the Forgotten Capital and Bone Village, you can actually get out of here and head to the Gold Saucer if you feel like it. But this this is the entrance to Great Glacier. And if we pull up the map, I think it's at the, yeah, at the very south, you can see the sign. Um, now there are definitely some items to get here, and there are some pretty cool mini games as well. Uh, I don't know if menu time counts to your timer here, but basically the whole time you're here, you're on a timer. And, uh, if you spend too long out here, you actually pass out in the cold. And you will wake up at your destination, where you're supposed to be. Uh, which is, is convenient if you just want to keep going, but, like I said, there's, there's some stuff to be had here. There's, uh, there's some good shit. Um, there's some good items, there's some materia, and all that. There's, um... I think there, ooh, there's a good item to steal here from somebody. Uh, we're gonna have to run into her later. Uh, it's just, it's just a regular old enemy. It's not like a specific character. Um, actually, I think there's two good things to steal here. There's some, I don't know, I'm gonna have to remember. Uh, we'll just try stealing from everybody because we're dirty, dirty thieves. Uh... And it's just, it's just a fucking pain in the ass because it's so... Well, first off, I, I keep accidentally jumping back into the wrong screens. And just finding everything and... Because you keep passing out, so you got a mind source here. I think there's something behind this tree as well. Am I seeing that wrong? That might just be a graphical glitch. Um, where the hell are the exits? I'm lost! Somebody send a forest ranger! Um, you know, you, you keep passing out, then you have to head back, and it's just, ugh, I, I hate it. I hate Great Glacier. This is, this whole area is referred to as Great Glacier, and it is seriously my most fucking hated part of this game. Um, it's just, I don't know. I don't know if it's poor design, because, uh, like, if you're not being a completionist, if you want to just go through and get every, and not, not get everything, then it's pretty easy, but... Um, you know, I guess here we can, uh, I can continue my, uh, my sort of analysis of all of the, uh, all the characters that we have available to us. So, like, so Barrett is, he's, he's got a pretty high natural HP, um, he's got some really good limit breaks at his disposal, and he's got a fairly good ultimate weapon, um, it's not the best, it's an, it's an okay ultimate weapon, let's just leave it that way. Um, yes, we got slots. Kate Sith's uh, second and only limit break. Uh, let's see, Red 13 has some pretty bad limit breaks, to be honest. Um, his ultimate limit break is really just kind of shit. And uh, let's see, we got the slots. So you guys have already seen dice. Dice is boring. It's just heavy damage to a single target that's random. Slots is kind of interesting. Uh, slots is actually part of speedrunning if you're doing a slots run there's you can either run slots or no slots because slots is capable of uh, of 
one-shotting any enemy in the game if you know how to exploit it. Um, let's see, who else? Who else do we have? Here, here's sort of a logic puzzle. Uh, you have big and small pieces of glacier, and they switch... They switch, um, what they are every time you hop, but only the ones adjacent to you switch. Kind of interesting. So if you get stranded like that, you'll end up getting kicked back to the beginning. Uh, let's see, who else? Red 13. I think Red 13 lends himself well to being a caster, more than, more so than anything else. Um, and he has some pretty bad limit breaks. He is a very cool character, though. Um, keep in mind, having bad limit breaks does not at all, like, stop, you know, remove a character as an option. There are plenty of, uh, of characters with bad limit break. Like, Tifa's limit break fucking blows <laughs> compared to everybody else's. Like, compared to Omni Slash and uh, Sid's final limit break and uh, Barrett's Unger Max limit break. And Yuffie's Doom of the Living, her, her limit break is fucking awful. Um, I forget what safety bit does, it's an accessory, I know. Let's see. Safety bit prevents against sudden death, petrify, and slow numb. That's not too bad, actually. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see, who else? Mm, so Yuffie has some pretty solid limit breaks, so in my opinion, one of the best. Um, one of the best, uh, what's it called, uh, ultimate weapons in the game. Her ultimate limit break is shit, though. Uh, Vincent has limit breaks that are good, but you don't really want to use uh, against any of the major bosses in the game because you lose, um, you, you, uh, lose control of them for the rest of the game. Or, uh, sorry, for the rest of the, of the battle. His final, his, his ultimate weapon is... It's potentially one of the most powerful weapons in the game, but I'm gonna tell you right now, I am not fucking grinding the death penalty. His final weapon is called death penalty, and it it gains power as it, as it kills more enemies. Um, but the thing is, is in order for it, it can uh, it's the source of a glitch called the uh, damage overflow glitch, um, where the game can't process. So if you basically just kill like a fucking jillion enemies, the game can't process how much damage it's supposed to be doing, and it ends up doing like exponentially more damage than it's supposed to, and it can one shot any enemy in the game, um, in including super bosses if you grind it out long enough. But the thing is, if you don't grind it up a lot, it's actually fucking terrible. Oops. It's gonna take me forever to get across here. Um, it's actually fucking terrible. It deals a lot less damage than every other weapon available to him. So, uh, death penalty is kind of shit if you don't want to put the, uh, the effort into it, which, which I certainly do not. Um, so keep that in mind if, uh, if you're gonna vote Vincent. Vincent does have some good weapons that aren't his final weapon, though, so won't worry about it too much if you want to pick Vincent. It's just that his final weapon sucks and, the, and his limit breaks are cool, but not very useful, so. Um... Who else do we have? Uh, we went over... Oh, Kate Sith. Uh, Kate Sith's limit breaks are fucking terrible. Um, unless you know the exploit to instantly one-shot any enemy in the game, which I do know how to do, but I'm not very good at executing it. It's actually very similar to uh, utilizing the slots reel, or to exploiting the slots reel in Battle Square, but there are many more slot options with Kate Sith, so it's, it's kind of harder. Um... And I'm just not going to do that because it makes the game boring. But his slots limit break is... It's completely random what it does. It has like seven or eight different things it could possibly be. And that includes everything from like non-elemental magic damage to physical damage to using a random summon to fucking um, instantly killing any enemy in the game including bosses to instantly killing your party. He can actually, actually accidentally ac uh, instantly kill your party. That's one thing that Kate Sith is fucking great for. Um, so, that's what Kate Sith can do. He's also just, like, you know, kind of a funny character, so it's hard to take any scene with him in it kind of seriously. Um, I believe he tends more towards the physical side of things. He doesn't really... Or no, actually, I think he has pretty good casting stats, but he also has high HP because he... Um, he, he's he's bulky, you know. He can he can serve well as a uh, like you know load a bunch of cover material onto him and have him soak up all the damage for the party rather than um, rather than like uh, load him up with magic material and lowering his max HP. Um, and Sid is Sid the last one we went over. Yeah, Sid Sid is easily one of the best characters in the game. 
uh, not only in personality, pers I, personally I really like Sid. He's one of the best characters in the game, he deals like, a good amount of damage, he does like high base damage. Um, his, uh, if you want to dedicate him as a physical attacker, uh, he has one of the best ultimate weapons in the game. Um, well, maybe not the best in the game, it's just that it's easiest to utilize his bonuses. Uh, his, his final, his ultimate weapon, Venus Gospel, deals more damage the more MP he has, and that means if you just want to keep his MP at max and dedicate him to just, uh, just dealing physical damage rather than casting at all, um, where the hell do I go to get into the next fucking screen? Come on now. Do I go? Okay, it's more over that way. Um, and, uh, he has one of the best limit breaks in the game. Uh, his, his ultimate limit break is called High Wind. And it's not a very flashy limit break, unlike Omni Slash, but it's actually more powerful than Omni Slash if, if Sid has good enough, uh, physical attack. What's kind of funny is, uh, oh, you can barely see that materia there, that, the added cut materia. That's actually a really good materia. Let's see what we can, um, let's see what we can link that to. Let's go with, I don't know if that works with enemy skill. I want to find out. Ooh, I gotta show you guys Bahamut. Bahamut's a fucking cool summon. Uh, I'll get out of here, Rama. I'll show you guys that next battle we show up. I don't have my headset on. Did that equip? I didn't hear the sounds. I don't know. Yeah, it did. Okay. He has one of the best limit breaks in the game. Uh, Omni Slash hits 16 times. High Wind hits 18 times. So if if Sid has notable uh, physical attack, make sure to touch the hot springs when you find the hot springs. So if Sid has really good uh, leveled up um, physical attack, he can out damage Cloud's final limit break. And, um,. I believe Omni Slash and High Wind can both deal more damage than the final uh, summon in the game. Same goes for Unger Max, Barret's final limit break, or uh, second to final limit break, actually. Unger Max also hits 18 times, um, but because it's his level 3 limit break, it doesn't have as high a damage modifier as uh, Barret's, so, or I'm sorry, as Sid's, so uh, his is, is harder to get the max damage on. Um, Oh, I totally forgot I was going to show you guys uh, Bahamut, because I want the kills for Kate Sith. I think that... Yeah, okay, those guys are immune to it, so... And anyway, Bahamut's a fucking cool summon. Let's go. This is a recurring character. Sometimes he's an enemy, sometimes he's a summon. Bahamut, he's, he's often in a lot of Final Fantasy games. Um, there are actually three uh, Bahamut summons in this game, and this is just the first one you find. Dum dum dum! He's a big-ass dragon! Bah. Uh, what else can I say about Sid? Um, one of the best limit breaks in the game. Actually, I the, actually the best limit break in the game. It's the easiest to max out uh, the damage per hit on, uh, and it deals the uh, the most the most amount of hits. And obviously, since the damage cap is 9,999, how many hits you can deal is everything when it comes to uh, maxing out your damage. Uh, so, as you can see, we just went around in a circle, it's fucking brilliant. Let's see if this is actually the area I want to go to in order to, to reach the, um, the person who has our next summon, Alexander. Uh, but I don't know if this is, no, I think I'm just going to go around in another circle. Fucking, I hate Great Glacier. I forget what the, the trick is. I think, I think you have to head north here, but it's, it's, you have to come from a certain way. And it's just a fucking pin in the ball sack. I just hate this shit. Um, because I never remember. I always have to look up a guide on how to get Alexander. You know, me, Mr. Fucking Final Fantasy. I know everything about this game. I can't remember how to get the stupid summon because it's so arbitrary. Um, what was I saying? I think you're supposed to hate this part, honestly. I think you're fucking supposed to hate it. Uh, so I guess that's it. That's my arguments. Obviously, I weighted that argument heavily in favor of Sid, but you guys don't have to pick Sid. You know, just, oh, I passed out. Um, let's let's just uh, leave it up to you guys uh, who you want to see, who you guys like the most. I know Red 13 is probably going to be a, uh, a strong contender as well. Uh, people might like Kate Sith for the trolliness of Kate Sith, because Kate Sith is just a fucking goofy ass giant blob. Um, Yuffie's kind of trolly as well. Barrett's, uh, Barrett's a good choice, but I think Barrett might be an underdog here, but he's a pretty good choice. But anyway, uh, collapse at the Great Glacier, to miracle you're alright. Keep in mind, this isn't the characters that I'll be using for the rest of the game, it's just the, ca the like, my final party, you know. My neighbor's hold off, been living here 20 years now, if you plan to head north, you better listen to my story. How about you're a crotchety old man, I don't listen to anything you have to say. I think he rests us up, too, I think we're in, oh, god damn it. You ever hear about those who challenged the cliff? Yeah. First time my friend Yamsky and I tried to climb the cliff was 30 years ago. But we weren't prepared for it. We did expect the temperature to be low, but... 
Dum dum dum. On that cliff, there's always a biting cold wind. The cold air lowers your body temperature. And Yamsky, he was he uh, he was blah blah blah. He was <laughs> can't fucking talk. He was below me. He cut his own rope, and I didn't even notice. That's shitting tragic, dude. His best friend just cut his fucking rope, killed himself because he was too cold, or maybe he thought he was weighing this guy down. Ever since then, I've settled here, continuing to challenge the cliff and providing advice to climbers. I forget what he says right there exactly. I accidentally skipped it. If you're going to climb the cliff, there's two precautions you need to take. First, check your route. It's hard to find because of all the snow. Second, once you get to a ledge, make sure to warm yourselves up. Understood? Yes. You also use a lot of energy getting up here, but I get some rest before you head out. So this guy prepares you for uh, challenging the cliff that's coming. We're heading to the northern crater. Um... And there's a, uh, because it's a, it's a big-ass crater, there's, it basically forms like a sheer cliff wall. Uh, and that, that cliff is the next area. That, that next area is actually pretty doable. It's not really much of a problem. It's also where we get the second ribbon in the game. It's very well hidden up in there. And, uh, basically this guy prepares you. Oh, yeah, everybody shows up here. Here's all of our potential, uh, teammates, folks. Let me see if there's anybody I skipped talking about. No, I think I got everybody. You know I've been thinking. What up? Seeing a place like this makes you realize how awesome nature is. But if anybody ever told me to live here, I'd tell them to, you know, shove it. i tell you one thing, though. I did. If I did have to live here, I'd change things and make it better. I guess the total opposite of this would be Midgar. When you think of it that way, Shinra don't seem so bad. What the hell am I saying? Shinra? Not bad? We'll secure the route. You come up later. You're kind of losing it, Barrett. Anyway, nice old man. Sits uh, sits at the bottom of the cliff. He apparently rescues people who pass out in, in Great Glacier. But um, He also gives you a uh, free place to rest. But anyway, okay, so here's here's a big-ass landmark. It's kind of similar to the world map. And as you, uh, as you continue, you can place markers using circle. And that'll help you stay oriented as your camera gets blown around. So you make sure you're heading... Uh, off in the right direction because you can't change to the other view that the other camera had and uh, Or the uh, the world map has and figure out where exactly you are now I believe that we want to head south uh, to get to the center of the map because I believe this dude's hut is at the north of the map And let's see, you bunnies have anything good to steal? Get him Kate Sith. Get him. Nothing. Okay, you know, literally don't have a goddamn thing um this is at the north, so we want to head directly south to get to the center, because there is a, uh, there is a good item cave. I actually, I don't remember how good the items in there actually are, but there's a cave with some items up in there in the very center. I'm going to head, uh, I'm going to keep doing Great Glacier until I pass out uh, again, and because you, you will pass out again and go back to uh, Mr. Cliff, I forget his name already, uh, Mr. Cliff Boy. Um... Mr. Goetz? Something like that. I forget his name. Um, oh, an all materia. Perfect. All, all materia is always good. Can't argue with a good all. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll just explore until we uh, we end up back at his house. But anyway, you place these markers to, to uh, you know, sort of orient yourself around the... Uh, Around the snow being blown, you know, as long as it's on the screen, you can you can remember where you are. Luckily, the markers do not get reset in battles. That would fucking glow. Uh, let's see, does this guy have anything? Anything? Phoenix down, not great. Not the best, I'll tell you that. We got the avalanche though. I've been waiting to run into one of these these sexy snow bitches because they have Jesus Christ. Okay, so freaked out. Oh, so here's the slot. So here, here, here's actually how you do the uh, the slots like exploit, and you can like figure out what your next slot is. And it's the same way with the gold saucer thing. But anyway, well, we didn't really get anything, so it's gonna give us a toy box, which is sort of the fallback. You don't, you don't roll anything. It's gonna give you a toy box, which is just like a random occurrence, I think. Um, and you know, it has it has a whole bunch. It, it's only when you actually uh, you can you can get. A mog, I think, that like restores all your HP and MP and stuff, or you can have like a bunch of damage dealt. It's got you can do a random summon. It's it's pretty cool. Um, you really need to heal though. I guess we'll wait until we get in the next battle and have somebody cast White Wind. Going this way. I keep interrupting myself every time I'm, I'm trying to say something. Um, man, these guys ain't got shit. I don't think. 
So, I, oh, I, you know what? I should have switched somebody out with Kate. The only reason I even had Kate in the party was because I wanted him to learn more limit breaks. Sid needs to learn limit breaks now. Actually, these guys have some pretty good, um... Let's see. Where's the hypers? Did I just pass my hypers? New Hyper. There we go. These guys have some pretty good uh, limit building attacks, so I'm going to throw a hyper onto Sid and get his limit break up a little bit. Let's go ahead and give a white win. Need to get that shit up. Because the thing is, we actually have Sid's first level 2 limit break, but we don't have his second level 1 limit break. So we actually need to use uh, jump boost a few more times. What's kind of shitty about Sid is um, he takes a long time to learn his limit breaks. Uh, normally, characters that you get later in the game, uh, like Vincent and Kate Sif and Yuffie, they learn all their limit breaks very quickly. But uh, Sid is the last character you get. Er, to be fair, you can get Yuffie or Vincent after him if you choose to do so, but um, Sid you get is the last character you get in the game. He still takes fucking forever to learn all of his limit breaks compared to the other characters you get later in the game. It's pretty annoying, actually. Um, I, I often don't even have the ability to learn Highwind until like long after I pick it up. Most characters, as you see, I can, I can learn their final limit breaks right when I get it because I like to do that whole grindy thingy, but, you know. I, I do know we need... I still haven't shown you guys, we learned Vincent's level 2 limit break. And he's he's the character that only has 4 limit breaks instead of uh, 7. Whoops. So he only has the 1 limit break for each level. I've already learned his level 2 limit break. I think I haven't shown it to you guys yet. Uh, but that's pretty cool. He's pretty easy. Even though he does he's he requires a, an okay amount of... Um, of uh, enemy kills in order to learn each limit break he doesn't have to bother using the limit break a certain amount of times to learn more limit breaks so you can you can gain his pretty fast just by having him kill a bunch of enemies you know stick him with a enemy skill material I, I, you notice i mostly stick to using enemy skills and like that's kind of it's kind of funny because when i was younger I, I never really used enemy skill but as i got older i started to realize how fucking overpowered enemy skills are you just basically like have all these amazing uh, spells at your disposal. You have like your all enemy casts, you have your fucking white wind, you have your MP restoration, you have status restoration, you have status infliction. Like enemy skill just does it all, all for one materia. That's the big thing. In this game you have to manage your materia slots and, and how your equipment is allocated and you have to worry about how many slots you have and you know, do I dedicate a bunch of magic to this character or summons to this character or heals to this character or more physical attacks to this character. Enemy skill does it all, baby. And you get a bunch of them. You get three of them uh, at this point in the game and four, four later on. You don't need four because you never have more than three characters. But anyway... Somebody asked me, um, your, do your characters gain uh, gain levels as you don't use them? It's actually yes. I believe your characters who are benched gain 50% of the XP of your characters in the party. So even though they don't keep up with them completely, they still uh, do gain some levels and they'll get left completely behind. Um, oh, I think these guys have something good. I believe these shield guys have something good. Sid, you go ahead and boost jump these guys. Um, I think the main uh, troublesome part about these guys is that they... Um, they have a high chance to dodge. Uh, they have a really good evasion stat for some reason. But if you just use magic against them, it's not a problem. I think they're also susceptible to level 4 suicide, but um, I'm going to put him to sleep because that'll negate his uh, dodge bonus. Um, okay, apparently he can't be put to sleep. Or frog. So, let's just keep stealing from him. I'm sure we'll get something eventually. Um, what was I just saying? Uh, fuck, I can't remember what I was saying. Uh, god. Why do I always do this when I go? Um, fuck, I honestly can't remember. Anyway, so, we're, I know that we're done with, um, we're done with Kate's uh, Sith's Limit Breaks. I can use him for a little while longer to show you guys more. Wait, really? It was just a Phoenix down this whole fucking time? Are you kidding me? I don't know, I think this guy's susceptible to level 4 suicide, so we'll just do that to finish him off. Um, blah, blah, blah. Oh yeah, I was ranting about how good enemy skill is. Enemy skill is just so good, I end up relying on it like the entire time. Um, I, okay, apparently this guy's not immune to level 4 suicide. Well, Jesus Christ, this guy's evasion, it's insane. It's insane in the membrane. Oh, jeez. Um... I don't even know. I'm, I'm at a loss as to what to do. 
I guess his magic evasion is pretty high too. I can't wait until we get our first Mistyle. Uh, Mistyle is a uh, is an armor that you get later in the game that is really really useful. It basically there there's a debate as to yes we got the dynamite. Dynamite. We'll use that once and then we'll uh, switch to his level two and limit break. Um, the Mistyle is useful. It's it's a uh, it's debatable which is better, the Mistyle or the Zedric. Because the Zedric has um, really has, has higher defense and um, I believe higher magic defense as well. But keep in mind, magic defense is bugged and doesn't work in this game. Um, but the Mistyle has really high uh, evasion stats, and additionally, it has uh, it has materia slots, whereas the Zedric does not have any. The Mistyle has like six, I think, or five. It has a good amount anyway. And, uh, the Mistyle gives you a huge evasion set. You have, like, a 50% chance to dodge everything. That includes, uh, magic defense, uh, evasion. Which, actually, I believe magic evasion does work. Magic defense does not. So you can decrease your chances of being hit by magic. You can't decrease the damage taken by magic. So, um, with Mistyle... Here's the thing. I don't know if this is a bug or if this was intentional. It was just kind of stupid. But for some reason, your evasion plays into the calculation on whether or not you're going to hit in this game. It's weird, you know, normally you would want to, like, just calculate your accuracy versus the enemy's chance to dodge, but for some reason, your chance to dodge increases your accuracy. I, I have to feel, I, like, I feel like this had to have been a bug, like, they didn't mean to program this in, but for whatever reason, that's just the way the calculation ended up going. And, uh, for that reason, the Mistyle is one of the best armors in the game, and probably the best armor in the game, because it makes your accuracy fucking perfect. And once you put Mistyle on a character, they can use Death Blow and never miss. They can always 100% hit Death Blow. That's insane, because Death Blow is an instant crit, and its only downside is that it has a 30% accuracy, or 33% accuracy, it's a 1 in, a one in 3 chance to hit. With Mistyle, it bumps your accuracy up so high that it will always hit. It's fucking great. It's kind of like you also have the um, Tifa has a weapon that does that, and uh, Vincent has, I think, two weapons that do that. Uh, but with the Mistyle, any character can do it. That's pretty cool. So I can't wait to get our first one of those. Uh, and I really need to figure out where this fucking uh, this fucking um, or how how to get to. The, uh, the fucking crazy lady. So basically, like, I went and touched the hot springs, right? And there's some lady out here, out in one of the, out in a cave, and she's the one that's hard to find, but you find the, the lady in the cave, and she's like, ah, don't, she's like, I love cold, don't touch me with them dirty hands that touch the, uh, that touch the hot spring, and she, and she attacks you. And then after you kill her, she gives you, uh, gives you the Alexander materia, so. I kind of want to just get all the, um, all the weapon, or all the, uh, items that I haven't picked up yet. Except for Alexander, because that one's going to be hard to get. End this episode, and then start of next episode, I'll look up how exactly you get to the Alexander materia, and I'll, I'll grab it up. So, like, looking at the map, which I can't, apparently. Why can't I look at the map? Plus... Okay, for whatever reason, it was disabled on that one screen. It's at the top right on top of that mountain. Now, I think... Let's see, we have kind of like a village kind of thingy over here. We have the tree that we were just at. I think we're kind of in like the forest area now. Oh, no, we're right by the uh, cave in the middle there. So we're going to want to keep heading west until we see the giant leaf. And then keep heading left... Keep heading west and a little bit north. If we can make it that far. We've been out here for a little while now. We might pass out soon. Um, after you... <laughs> One time I spent, last time I played through this game, which was very recently actually, because I had a file that I was running concurrent to this one. Oh, there's the bitch! She's got some good stuff. Alright, first off, Sid, start picking off these dudes. And then... Steal from that home. No, Kate's if you fool! Gonna have to cast White Wind on him just to get that off of him. Get me ass, don't you do that. I might... But I probably should do. He accidentally tried to steal from Sid. Sid ain't got nothing worth grabbing, you dumbass cat. You silly, silly cat. Uh, we can, uh, you can actually start draining her MP and then she's useless because she's all like, magic. Just, this biatch. No, don't kill her. Okay. I was worried. The Ice Tomb. She has a... You know how we got the championship belt from the... Um, 
Oh, we got a first try. Fucking A. Hell yeah. Um, we got the championship belt, which was plus 30 vitality, plus 30 strength. And that vitality is basically your physical... It, it lends to your physical defense stat. That's what that does. Uh, the circlet that we just stole from her is basically the magic version of that. It increases your magic and your spirit. Spirit is uh, spirit affects your magic defense. The thing is... Ooh, what did we get? Oh, we got toy box, really. Oh, he got hit with a rock, bitch. Um, the thing about, uh, what's it called? Spirit is that unlike magic defense on armor, spirit actually does contribute to your magic defense. So, uh, your magic defense stat can only be raised by increasing your spirit, which um, makes it kind of hard because spirit's a base stat and it's much harder to, to change. But anyway, who do we have as our caster? Sid? I think it's Sid. Let's go ahead and equip that to him. Oh, I have the championship belt on him anyway. Or champion belt. Which we really don't want on him. Circlet. And then... Champ belt on Kate Sith. Because Kate Sith is our physical dude. So hopefully if we keep heading west, if I read the map correctly, we should end up at the giant leafy thing. As you will see in a moment, I hope. I hope to hope. Come on, baby. One thing that kind of makes it more disorienting is that every screen... Yes, giant leafy thing. Found it. Every screen... Not only are you getting into battles this whole time, which just further starts to disorient you, but... Every screen is connected by two, like, filler screens, which makes it harder to track where you are exactly. Yes, get that limit break up. Get that limit break. Get that limit break. We need the... The reason I'm having Sid kill everything is because he still needs to learn his level 3 limit break. And... By the time I'm able to swap out... Hate Sith for Vincent. I think Vincent is the last character that I need to learn limit breaks on aside from Sid. So then we can transfer all this all the kills over to Vincent. Hopefully Sid will be done his uh his level three limit break by then. Uh but I need to show you guys dynamite and then we can switch over to his level two limit break, which is what is his, uh hyper jump, I think it's called. Yeah, hyper jump. And that's, uh, it's kind of funny, because his second level 1 limit break and his level, his, his first level 2 limit break, I should say, are basically the same thing. Um, it's just that they, one deals more damage than the other, obviously. So here we go, dynamite. Yo, check out this dynamite. Lighting on my goddamn cigarette. Fuck y'all. Love it. Good limit break. Good limit break, dude. And then, hyper jump is basically... It, Sid's kind of interesting. He's he's based on the Dragoon archetype. Dragoons are uh, dragon knights in uh, in, the, in the world of Final Fantasy. And well, not the world of Final Fantasy because there's no one single world, but they're a recurring like sort of class in Final Fantasy. And uh, Sid is is based on them, and they always have uh, an ability called jump, which during the like turn-based Final Fantasies, uh, they would jump so high they would go out of the battle screen. And then they would just stay there for like three turns and then finally drop in because like that's, that's just how high they jumped as they, they were gone. Like uh, Freya in Final Fantasy IX is a dragoon as well and she she had the uh, she had the hyper jump. It was fucking awesome. Uh, I think we've been here actually. I think we are. I think I had I headed out here and I've already been here. Uh, yes, I have. Fuck. Oh, passed out. Uh, and Sid's based on that archetype as well, which is kind of funny because a, a lot of uh, the the uh, Final Fantasy classes are not present in Final Fantasy VII. They were originally going to give every character a job, like Cloud was going to be a Mystic Knight was the name of his class. Uh, Eris was going to be a Geomancer. Uh, I believe Sid was just supposed to be a Dragoon. It's kind of kind of funny because Tifa was called a Shooter, but um, she doesn't actually. It wasn't in the terms of like. Vincent shooting is shooting is apparently a term for mixed martial arts like an old-timey term for mis mixed martial arts And she was still gonna be a brawler, etc. Things like that uh, and uh, So obviously Sid was based on the dragon. He was one of the few characters that was actually based on a uh, mainstream Final Fantasy uh, job and uh so he's got the jumping abilities for his limit breaks. He uses spears because dragoons have always used spears. I just I always thought that was kind of interesting. I really like that about Sid because I really like dragoons uh, in Final Fantasy. So, anyway, guys, uh, next time we're going to go get Alexander, and then we're going to challenge the cliff. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.